a rank mystery. I say it's a rank mystery. What would you say, Mrs. Bishop? A young lad, fit as a lock, gets to work on time, no problems there, well scrubbed and smooth of chin. Now he's wandering around cow-eyed, he can't keep his mind on his job, he's tired, absent-minded, distracted. If you didn't know better, you could almost say you were in love. Shut up, Uncle Fred. Well, it's a mystery, lad. Is it eight nights? You're not sleeping. Must be very late nights. Perhaps you're getting up too early in the morning to do your studying, is that it? Is it that old NVQ butchery magic that's got you in its spell? No. It stays a mystery. I suppose you need to be early risers in your trade, don't you? Oh, you do, Mrs Bishop, I say you do. Up with the bin men, aren't you, Ashley? Are you done next Wednesday, Weatherby? Coming to cheer on our little investment? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure. Oh, Rita, go on. Change your mind. No, I don't think I can get the time off. Nonsense! What's the point of running a business if you can't delegate? Having said that, I'm not sure my nephew could cope on his own. The past few days he's had his mind on other things. A little bit of totty that looks after Barlow's nipper. Well, Ken's been away for the last few days, so uh, she's had the house to herself. You don't miss out, do you? Now, listen, just because I live in Grasmere Drive doesn't mean I haven't got my ear to the ground. So why the cat's been away, the mice have been playing, have they? I'm saying no. Fred, Fred, what? Oh. Oh. word you, please. Yeah. Hilary Forrest just went on the phone. The horse. It's poorly. Well, what's wrong with it? She don't know. Vets come and give it an injection. Oh, well, I don't want to know either. I hate injections. Mm. So do I. 25 quid a time. More. Is that what you said? What about call-out fee? Poor thing. I suppose that's Knox Weatherby races, Aunt said. No, oh, she's withdrawn it. Doesn't matter. It's going to be better for them. Useless article. Well, poor horse can't help it. Probably took ill when it heard you were going to sell it for stewing meats. That flaming nag gets more sympathy than I do. I saw some signs of life, so I thought I'd pop my head round the door. Are you open? Well, I am and I'm not. I've been meaning to do a stock take for ages, and I can get through it easier when shop's quiet. And Mavis is digging for victory. Is there something you're after, Fred? Well, I was just on my way to pay my respects to the widow of a recently deceased colleague, and I were wondering, could I buy a condolence card? Oh, be my guest. Nobody I know, I hope. You might do. We were a news agent. Oh. Charlie Hunter, he had a shop on, on Kitch Kitchener Street. Yeah, I've known him for years. Only to say hello to. Had a heart attack last Friday. Passed away five o'clock Saturday morning. Thankfully, Judith, his missus, were at his bedside. Oh, do you know, I saw him at a charity do less than a month since. He looked the picture of health. How old was he? Can't be more than 60. 59. 59. Is that all? In some ways, I feel culpable, Rita, to be honest. Oh? He liked his chops and bacon on the fatty side, did Charlie, and I always obliged. Give over. It could be running that shop that's done it. He kept it open every hour God sent. Uh, it's not just the city whiz kids who can burn themselves out. Mm. Warm thoughts in your time of need. That should do the trick. So you and him were pals, eh? No, not close pals, no, but we moved in the same circles. Or should I say rectangles? Ah. Well, give my sympathy to his wife. In fact, you can do better than that. I'll give you a card from me. That's very thoughtful of you, Rita. She'll appreciate that. Well, best thing about this job, as Charlie knew, you can always lay your hand on a card, whatever the occasion. Although I don't relish going through this particular... Ask him to give it one massive injection. Put it out of its misery like. Put me out of its misery and all. Can't be doing that. That's what's in it. That's euthanasia. Can't be doing that, Fred. Well, summit has got to be done, Jack. A good mind to go there with a shotgun and do the job himself. Oh, you wait till next season. Wait till he's had a bit of a rest. And that's when things will come right for us, wait see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In the meantime, it's money for this and money for that. It can't go on, Jack. I say, it can't go on. Hello, Rita. What the hell? Uh, vodka and tonic, please, Fred. Vodka, vodka and tonic, tonic please, Jack. Incidentally, mm -hmm. Judy says thank you very much for the card. You were very touched. She bear enough. As best Thanks, can be Jack. expected. Uh, Rick. Cheers, Fred. Cheers. Uh, do you know when the funeral is? Wednesday morning, over at Dunham Massey, where his mother's buried. I was thinking I might go myself, unless it's just for family and close friends. Oh, no, the more the merrier. Judith will be delighted to see you. You sure? Certainly. 
I'm driving over. We could go together if you like. Take it from me, Percy, lad, if there were a successful methods, I'd have found it. I agree with you. I'm only telling you what I read. Oh, smoke, frog, spawn, I've tried the lot. I say, I've tried the lot. If earth's not meant to grow, it won't. Fresh cut grass, this fella said. You boil it for half an hour and then apply it to the scalp with a paintbrush. Rubbish. Of course it is. Did he say how long you've got to leave it off? Half, lad. Not for these. Table by door, put them next to the order of service. Oh, my God. Not for each guest as they arrive. Just hope there's enough. Charlie, what a very popular fellow. Well, what are you doing? I'm outside shaking hands oh. as Master Dealer. It's expected. Right. Hello, Lisa. Look, I didn't know you were coming. I, I could have given you a lift. Hello, Al. Well, uh, of course, Charlie were one of your lot, weren't he? Square dealer, mm. yes, yes. Did he come into your car? Look? No. Oh, well, mine's over here. Hold on, that woman, Roberts! I came with Fred, Alf. Oh. He'd have a shirt off me back if it weren't pinned to me underpants. Just saying to the vicar, lovely service, don't you think so? Yes, yes, it was. Right. Are you not going to Charlie's, then? No. No, no, family only. We don't want to intrude. No, me not. Hey! You can give old Clem Percival a lift. Clem! Hey, hang on a minute. Clem! Alf's going your way! Ah, it'll give you somebody to chat to. Save your journey on your own. Come on, Rita. See you, Al. Carlo. Thanks, Fred. Right, Clem, uh, Carl's over here. As bad as I am. <laughs> Can you go have another cup of tea? No, I've still got some, thanks. Plenty of other things to enjoy, you know, Rita. Should go out more. Yeah, I've been thinking that myself. Well, think more about it. I'm not chatting you up, I'm giving you advice. I know what it's like. I went through a recluse period after Sybil died. Was it a happy marriage? Thinking back, it was. Lord knows how she put up with me, but she did. She used to say she married me on the rebound. I think the fellow before used to work for Dunlops. <laughs> See, I never know when you're being serious. What's the habit, Rita? I can't make him love me. I make him laugh. Well, I've laughed enough today, I can tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> it's been good for me and all. You know, I could spend the rest of my life sitting here with you. Hey, now you are chatting me up. Don't you flatter yourself. No, they make a very nice cup of tea here. Buns aren't bad at all. Yes, Fred. Scotch and a tray, please, love. Yeah. Duckingfield. Pardon? Duckingfield, that's where he lives now. Oh, Clem Percival, he used to live at the top of Chapel Street. Before the flood, he lived at the top of Chapel Street. Duckingfield. Fred, what you got there? Brochures. Apropos our little tete-a-tete -tete yesterday. Oh, I wouldn't grace it with that title, Fred. It were more just a cup of tea and a cream bun. There are some grand places to be discovered in this sceptred isle of ours, Rita. Have a gander at these. Well, I haven't really got the time just now, Fred. Now, Rita, time and tide waiteth for no man. Ah, good morning, Kelly, love. Rita, Mr Elliot. Hmm. And what have you been doing to my little Ashley? Nothing. Nothing, she says. He's wandering around looking as if he's lost a prime fillet and found a chipolata. Fred, I'm trying to run a business here. Look, can we leave these until, say... The Rovers, tonight? I shall await you with bated breath. I prefer it if you just breathe normally, Fred. <laughs> a bientôt. Huh? I thought York might be just up your street. Steeped in history and a tea room every ten paces. <laughs> Goes back to, to Vikings, you know. All that rape and pillage. It's a bit more refined now. Well, I should hope so. Well, I've marked some hotels here. See what takes you fancy. Some of them have even got four posters. I think you're running a bit ahead of yourself, Fred. Oh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to imply... We I wasn't can get to I mean, York there and back in the day and still have time for a cup of tea. No, you can't cram it all in at high speed. You want a bit of leisure and luxury. I find my own bed more than comforting, Fred. Oh, I can imagine that. <laughs>